Microsoft released their October 2020 update for Power BI, which focused a lot on looks, visuals, and ease of use for new Power BI users. In this video, we'll try to cover some of these new features, which I'm sure a lot of our new Power BI users will appreciate. I know I would have appreciated some of this stuff when I was just getting started. So all of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start by rounding up the features that really improve the user experience for those just getting started in their Power BI journey. Microsoft added something that they call Canvas Watermarks which are basically on-screen prompts that guides users on the typical workflow of Power BI development. So essentially when you open Power BI Desktop for the first time, instead of getting a blank report, you have some on-screen prompts on where you can get started by getting data from different places. So this Canvas option gives you some options of getting your data from say an Excel or a SQL database. Once you have some data loaded, you'll get on-screen prompts basically showing you that you can drag fields into the report view to start visualizing them into reports. Don't have any data to get started with? Well, it seems like the Power BI team also thought of this as well. From the add data watermark, you also have the option to try a sample data, which loads a sample financial data for you with some tables and data. So you can get right into the action of visualizing them into beautiful reports or dashboards. Moving on to the next feature is the new simplified installation for template apps in the Power BI service. If you didn't know yet, template apps are sort of out of the box reports that lets your customers create their own instance and connect it to their own data. So imagine a template app that has pre-built analytics, charts, and graphs for services like Zendesk or GitHub, for example. By letting the customers download the app and connect to their own data, you're giving the customers the ability to get insights out of their data straight away. Now in the past, it can be a little bit confusing to configure these template apps, but now with this new feature, template apps can now come with pre-configured authentication settings, so your users won't have to worry about that. Things like adding example text to the text fields, adding links to the documentation, or the use of parameters. These are the small changes that contribute to a much better user experience. So great job on this one. You can test the simplified installation in action by downloading the COVID US app from the Power BI service. Speaking of template apps, did you know that you can discover template apps directly from your Power BI desktop now? Under get data, you'll find a new option to get data from template apps, which essentially gives you a list of template apps that were created by partners who are offering pre-built data sets and reports that you could use. This means that once you manage to connect your data, you'll be able to utilize the calculations uh, and the data set itself that comes with the template app as you'd normally would in a normal Power BI report. To me, this template app feature is such a good opportunity to show the Power BI capabilities in terms of getting data from a, a multitude number of data sources. I can definitely see ways that we could use this to create standard reports that our customers are typically looking for. Another slightly more advanced feature that got released is the ability to export PBIDS files directly from Power BI Desktop. If you didn't know already, PBIDS files opens up the Power BI Desktop app, similar to how a normal PBIX file would, except that with the PBIDS file, you can configure it to automatically try to connect to certain data sources. You still need to authenticate to your data sources as normal, it just makes your workflow a little bit easier by not having to worry about putting in things like database names or server names. This feature was released all the way back from last year, October. And at the time, the only way you can really configure this file is through a notepad or through a tool that was created by powerbitips.com. If you wanted to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description box below. But from this month's release, 
you'll now have the ability to export this file directly from your data source settings. Now that we've covered some of the features that were more for our new users, let's move on to some of the features that I'm excited to actually start using from this month onward. Personalized visuals feature is finally out of preview and it came with a lot of improvements on the way. To briefly summarize this feature, it basically gives your users the ability to personalize their visuals on the report, say changing a bar chart to a line chart, changing the axis, changing the labels. And they can do these changes straight from the report view without having to go to Power BI Desktop and updating these visuals. It's a handy way to give your users the ability to customize their visuals and reports without necessarily having to affect the actual report itself. With this release, they added the ability to drag and drop fields in between different properties. They've added some new watermarks and pop-ups in this feature. So basically it lets your users know that they can bookmark their personalization into their reports. Fields in this personalized visual feature can now be set to don't sum the same way that you would normally do in a Power BI desktop. And with the personalized visuals, you can now set this to the report level and on the page level. So you'll find it under page properties. So tons of improvements that came with this feature for this month. The last feature that I wanted to cover this month is the dynamic M query parameters that has come into preview. From what I understand, it basically lets your users control the parameters on your direct query reports based on their slicers and filters. If you don't know what direct query is, I made a video a while back explaining it uh, when you would use it and how it compares to the import method, which is probably how you're using Power BI at the moment. The direct query method comes with a lot of limitations, especially on the transformation side. And it's ideally used with reports that work with such high volumes of data that you wouldn't have been able to visualize the data through the normal import method. With direct query, all requests are sent back to the source while the calculations happen and the results are then pushed back into Power BI. And in the past, the parameters are set for your data sources through Power BI desktop only. But it seems that with this new feature, you can set the parameters to be dynamic, which lets you users control the queries that are being sent to the source through their slicers and filters. This seems like a really useful feature, but to be honest, I don't really work with direct query as much to be able to test this, but it certainly sounds like a great way to start adding some more interactivity into your direct query reports. And those were pretty much all of the features that I was excited about for this month's Power BI update. What I covered here is not the full list, so I'll link the blog post in the description box below so you can have a read at it yourself. Give this video a like if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching guys. See you again on the next one.